Okay, so the Pistons, they won the lottery. They will be selecting Cade Cunningham. That's a pretty safe bet. And with Cade, they're getting a guy who they can immediately give the keys to the offense. He can play in the pick and roll. He can create shots for himself and others. He's a very willing passer, a really good passer. The size is awesome. The only real concerns, quote-unquote concerns with Cade, are his ball handling, while very good, has another level to get to. And he's not an explosive athlete, but his IQ is off the charts, his craftiness, the way that he can stop and go and just be so smart after getting a screen and just read the defense and make the the perfect play in the split second. He's really good at that stuff right now. Maybe he also needs to get a little bit better with his pass accuracy. These are things that he's already acknowledged he needs to get better at. He's already taken a jump with his shooting as a catch-and-shoot guy and off the dribble a little bit. He shows a willingness to move off the ball. He even has a bit of a post-game already. I mean, this could be a really complete player who can score a lot of points, create for himself, make plays for other guys, the whole nine yards. And I do think there's potential for him to be an off-ball player as well. So when you look at the Pistons roster, Jeremy Grant, okay, He's now not the primary scorer, which is great because while he clearly proved a lot of people, including me, wrong in the sense that he could score, you know, the efficiency wasn't great and the passing wasn't all the way there. Well, now Cade can create shots for Grant and suddenly that signing for the Pistons, it does look a bit better. I mean, not that the Jeremy Grant signing was ever that bad, especially when he proved that he could be a better scorer. Uh, but now it looks really good because now their second guy is making $20 million. Like, most teams' second guy is making a whole lot more than that. Now, whether Jeremy Grant is on this team six years from now when Cade Cunningham is however good he's going to be, that's a bit of a question. And there's a decent chance he's going to get paid more in his next extension. But for right now, it's, like, pretty good, right? You look at the rest of the team. You've got Isaiah Stewart. The guy plays really hard. Is he a long-term starting big We'll have to see. You've got Sadiq Bey. That's a shooter for Cade. That makes a lot of sense. There is the Killian Hayes thing, and we'll have to see. I mean, while I do think that Cade has potential to play off ball, you, of course, want to put the ball in his hands. And if that means Killian Hayes needs to either adjust to that or potentially be traded, then so be it. I mean, I'm not giving up on him as a player. He dealt with injuries, and I think he was the youngest guy in the draft or whatever. But this is a whole different thing. I mean, when you've got yourself the next star of the NBA, well, some guys need to get out of the way. We saw it with Dallas and Luka, and that might have to be the case with Killian Hayes. We'll see, though. You never know with that stuff. And Dwayne Casey is the coach, which I'm cool with. I mean... Look, Dwayne Casey, no, I don't consider him one of the best coaches. He's definitely far from one of the worst coaches in the NBA. And I'm expecting him to put Cade in positions to do well, which is mainly space the floor for him, set screens for him. I mean, of course, that's not the only thing you want, but that's Cade's bread and butter. You let him do what he does. And besides that, you would hope that Casey can be the perfect type of guy for a young team. Someone who can be a leader and teach the guys how to be professional. I mean, Cade is already really mature. I've watched at least one interview with the guy. He seems very self-aware and very well adjusted to the moment. He's also super clutch. The guy had no fear taking big shots in college, so that's already a good sign. It just seems like someone who's going to come in and immediately transform everything about the Pistons. I mean, the the expectations from everybody on the roster are going to be raised because now, I mean, this is a team that, you know, if they would have got like the fifth pick, I mean, there's a chance the fifth pick ends up being awesome. But if they would have gotten that, it might have just been another lottery season. And it's not a guarantee they're going to make the playoffs. But depending on how awesome Kate is, and listen, I mean, I'm not the super big draft guy, but I haven't seen a single person not suggest he's going to be awesome. Could he drag them to a playoffs in his first season, second season? I don't know. It's just going to be a matter of how good is he right away. But based on what we've seen between LaMelo, Zion, Luka, it can happen fast. So this is huge for the Pistons. I mean, when was the last time we looked at the Pistons as having real potential? Like, I guess it was the Drummond-Reggie Jackson days when we thought that Reggie Jackson had another level to get to and we believed the same with Drummond. 
And we all know how that ended up. Seems like a different thing with Cade here, though. To talk about other things with the Pistons, so Cade is going to be getting, what, $11 million or so? So you add that to their 102 salary for this offseason. If you take off Corey Joseph's contract, they're actually underneath the salary cap, and if they wanted to get real wild with trying to get off of, like, Rodney Magruder or Josh Jackson, they could get down even a little lower if they wanted to get aggressive in free agency. That'll be another thing to make note of. Like, how much do they really want to go for veterans, or do they just want to embrace the young guys and they're okay with having a couple extra losing seasons? Or do they want to go with, like, what the Hornets did, where they draft LaMelo and then they sign Gordon Hayward? I mean, we saw with Trey Young, like, he made a pretty obvious look. If the Hawks don't start putting talent around me, I'm going to start making this place kind of difficult. So we'll have to see. There's a fine line where... You don't want to put all the chips in too early because you might miss out on something. You might give a big contract to a guy who wasn't really worth it, especially if you had cap space the next year or something. Uh, but you also don't want your star young guy looking around after three years and being like, this is it. So, yeah. What's Cade going to get on his max extension? Because it's safe to say that's going to happen. What's that going to be, 30-something million a year in five years? Although they'll give it to him in... Well, after it's after the third season, so... I don't know. The point is, is uh, the Detroit Pistons before today, it was eh. Now they had some interesting young players, okay, but they have, they've gotten the first real step towards a team going to the next level. You need your star. You need not even Zion. You need John ja Morant. I mean, we saw the instant impact that John ja Morant had on the Grizzlies, and Cade Cunningham could have the same thing on the Pistons. I will say, as a Celtics fan, I was kind of scared he was going to go to the Raptors, especially because of. Uh, you know, they were in the top, whatever, and, well, I guess I should still care, because I think he's going to make the Pistons better immediately. Are there any other quick takes on the lottery? I mean, we've got, first off, the Raptors getting the fourth pick. That's massive. I mean, Jalen Suggs, Jalen Green, the big guy from USC whose name escapes me at the moment, but he's supposed to be, like, super skilled and versatile. That's huge for a team that's already good. For Cleveland's sake, I mean, all these teams should care about best player available, but for Cleveland's sake, they have like some actual guys they're committing to now, or they're thinking about it between Jared Allen, the backcourt, Okoro. So that's interesting with where they want to go. You have the Rockets, who really needed to get their own pick, because if they would have not gotten their own pick, that would have been pretty damn rough. The other thing, too, is also the Wolves not getting their pick, which I guess is not shocking. The odds were not in their favor to keep it. And I know the Wolves have some exciting young guys, but they better start winning right away. <laughs> you know, that pick could have helped them. Uh, and for the Warriors' sake, you know, they got, what, two picks in the lottery? That's huge. Gives them some more ammo for some sort of a move. Anyway, Pistons fans, congrats. You got the next star.